Did dinosaurs have feathers? Okay, so in parts one and two, we saw that whether or not one thinks dinosaurs had feathers is primarily determined by one's evolutionary scheme of classification and has little really to do with feathery imprints on fossils. So please go back and watch videos one and two. There's a lot in them, otherwise you won't really understand what I'm gonna summarize with. So. How then should we summarize everything that we've looked at and all of these observations? Well, calling Microraptor and many other similar creatures birds, it does not diminish the morphological gap that exists between them and modern birds. No matter what one calls these creatures, they still look much more like Sinosauropteryx and other similar theropod dinosaurs than they do to modern birds. Giving these creatures the name bird, therefore, in no way mitigates this very obvious morphological similarity. And this is where creationists need to be thinking outside of the box, coming up with models that can explain that similarity. And for those interested, I've started a new playlist on this subject, so please go and try and find those videos. Second, calling Microraptor and other feathery reptiles dinosaurs does not mean that one believes birds evolved from dinosaurs. It just means that some dinosaurs were created to fly, just as some mammals like bats do today, and some reptiles like pterosaurs did in the past. <coughs> Lastly, let's not forget why Darwinian evolutionists divided on this issue in the first place. And that's because there's a dearth of in-between fossils leading up to the evolution of feathers and flight, as seen in Archaeopteryx. As it turns out, this problem just became more salient with a recent study that tentatively supports powered flight in Anchiornis, a fossil theropod that predates Archaeopteryx by nearly 15 million years. And this means that evolutionary transitions for feathered flight are completely absent from the fossil record. In one geologic moment, you have ground-dwelling theropod dinosaurs like Sinosauropteryx, the next geologic moment, you have panaceous feathers and flight in all of its glory. And these data, they fit very well within a creationist paradigm, no matter which way one approaches the evolutionary assumptions for the purpose of furthering creationist research. So that's all from me here, Ken Colson at Creation Unfolding. Of course, I've got a website, www.creationunfolding.com for more resources. I've got a book if you're interested. Um, of course, if you really liked this video, then please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for further access to more videos as they come up. Besides, it really helps that Google algorithm along. Of course, the greatest support that you could give me is prayer. So if you could pray for me right now, that would be much appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.